Hi, everybody, and, uh, and welcome to this uh, special webinar on California innovation, building a better mousetrap. We're, we're really pleased that you, you all could join us today. And over the next hour or so, we want to introduce you to what is a, an exciting opportunity for local agencies in California. Um, as well as um, uh, for those of us, uh, for those of you who are in, uh, in state government, because there's an important role for you to play in helping connect us with your local agency partners for this, for this program. Um, I am Tom O'Brien. I am the director of the, the California LTAP Center. Uh, I'm also with the Center for International Trade and Transportation at California State University, Long Beach. Um, and I'll be serving something of as uh, something of a, a master of ceremonies today and, and connecting you to some um, very knowledgeable people who are going to explain different facets of the of the Build a Better Mousetrap program and also the environment uh, that supports innovation within California. So Scott, maybe you can go to the next slide. Um, I mentioned the, the California LTAP uh, program. Uh, for those of you who have, are familiar with LTAP and, and know that it has been, um, the administration, the administrative home has been um, housed in other places in the past at Sac State um, and before that Berkeley. Um, we are the new administrative home, but we work very closely with those other uh, partners in, in local assistance uh, through uh, DLA um, at Caltrans, and you're going to be hearing from um, from uh, Daniel in a little bit about that. Uh, but since this is an opportunity for us to introduce ourselves to you, um, we wanted just to take a minute to tell you a little bit about uh, the people behind the, the California LTAP at Cal State Long Beach. Um, in addition to myself uh, as the director, we have uh, Scott Jakovich, who's on the um, on the webinar today, and who we, I want to thank for uh, making this possible. He was he was behind the scenes doing all the work. Um, he manages uh, the program for us on a day to day uh, basis. So, um, in addition to me, Scott's a, a really valuable and important resource for the for the LTAP. One of the things that we are going to be prioritizing is communications to uh, local agencies. Um, expanding beyond the uh, the really good information that is already out there, um, and making sure that the the work that the LTAP does gets to an even wider audience and brings new information to the table. And so we have Natalie Reyes who's going to be managing those communication efforts. And you should be looking for a, a new newsletter um, from us coming out very soon. Uh, one of the groups that we're going to be focusing on in our outreach is making sure that the state's uh, tribal communities are, uh, are served and that we do so both through the LTAP and in support of uh, the new TTAP center once that uh, is awarded and we expect that would be later um, this year. And so Tyler Reeb, who's our director of research and workforce development at CITT has been actively engaged with tribal communities and will serve that purpose. Um, and then Hamid Rahai from our College of Engineering is working behind the scenes um, on a new sustainable engineering program that will be um, uh, what we hope is a, is a new flagship offering from, uh, from LTAP. So, and then in addition to all of this, we have the institutional support of our College of Professional and Continuing Education, um, uh, which adds capacity um, in terms of training, uh, development and management. So we wanted to introduce ourselves to you and say, uh, say that we're thrilled to be working on this program with all of our other partners. Uh, next uh, slide, Scott, please. Um, what we want to be doing uh, today is, in addition to showcasing um, the Build a Better Mousetrap program, we also wanted to take an opportunity to look at what's happening in innovation in California in general. Um, and you're gonna be uh, hearing from, from uh, uh, Pauline later, uh, who's gonna be talking about some of that, that infrastructural support within, within Caltrans. Um, but in general, um, 
what the LTAP program and our partners try to do is make sure that we have an opportunity to uh, share best practices, uh, discoveries, um, innovations in, in terms of process management that are occurring and, and homegrown in California, making sure that they reach not only a statewide, but a, a national audience as well. Um, this is important because recognizing what those of you in local agencies are doing um, can benefit other agencies. Uh, they benefit the communities that we all serve um, and the transportation systems um, as a whole. And uh, that's an important role that we play in uh, as an LTAP uh, coordinator. Um, it's also best practices when it comes to uh, management of public resources, right? Uh, we want to make sure that we're not reinventing the wheel uh, every time we we do something, and it it uh, it's a service to the state as a whole, to its travelers, to its communities, um, and let's see, yeah, and um, one of the things that uh, you're going to be hearing about is um, is how we are able to recognize the local agencies within California through the Build a Better Mousetrap program. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what the benefits are of taking part in this, uh, in this program, which uh, includes uh, free training for the, um, for the awardees. Okay? Uh, the, the Build a Better Mousetrap program is actually a program that's, it's a, it's a national program administered through the Federal Highway Administration and in California, it's done through LTRAP uh, in partnership with, with uh, Division of Local Assistance, uh, Division of Research Innovations, uh, Innovations uh, Information and Systems Innovation, and um, the Federal Highway Administration Center for Local Aid Support. And you'll be hearing from, uh, from each of those folks uh, briefly. I think at, what this, at this point, what I'd like to do is, is bring in um, uh, Daniel, and I think that's next, uh, Scott, is that correct? Yeah. Um, hey, thank gonna, you, Tom. Yeah, who's gonna talk a little bit about the um, uh, DLA. So thank you, Daniel. So thank you, Tom. My name is Daniel Burke. I'm from the Caltrans Division of Local Assistance. I'm the Local Technical Assistance Program Manager, and I'm also joined today by Sherry Graham, if, if you do have any training ideas that you would like to see the Caltrans Division of Local Assistance provide for our over 600 local public agencies and tribal partners, please email me at the link below. And I also want to give a big thanks to Tom O'Brien and the staff at Cal State University Long Beach for helping California promote its first and inaugural Build a Better Mousetrap and hopefully more in the future to come. I also want to thank Pauline Valenzuela from the, the Caltrans Division of Research Innovation and Systems Information. I hope I got that correct, Pauline. And also some of our other partners as well who help us to train not only the, the Cal, California State University of Long Beach, but also the University of California, Berkeley, and also Sacramento State University which Tom is going to talk about here real shortly. So thank you so much. And it's all yours, Tom. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so next uh, slide, Scott, please. There we go. Thanks. Um, so, Actually, I'm sorry, I'm, yeah. Uh, actually, at this point, I thought I would be introducing uh, Dan Hawk from the, uh, from the Federal Highway Administration. Um, and if Dan is on the line, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the Center for Local Aid Support. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, my name is Daniel Hawk. I am the Local Programs Manager for the California Division Office of the Federal Highway Administration. Um, yeah, so to talk a little bit about the Center for Local Aid Support, uh, it's been around about 40 years, uh, Federal Highway Center for Local Aid Support. 
Um, they provide information, training, technical assistance uh, to local governments, tribes, and federal land management agencies. Um, their goal is to provide, uh, sorry, to spread best practices around um, and ensure that effective innovations are widely utilized. <clears throat> um, you know, they have several programs, including this build, build a better mousetrap, and the, they uh, oversee the um, LTAP and TTAP programs uh, and those grants as well, so. Thanks. Thanks, Dan. And um, I will say that we've assembled this team so that um, Dan, both Daniels and, uh, and Pauline, who I'm gonna introduce now, um, can answer questions from a, ride, from a, a wide range of, of perspectives. Um, regarding not only the Build a Better Mouse Track program, but the innovations efforts that are underway both at the state and at the national level. Um, but now I'd like to introduce uh, Pauline Valenzuela, who is with the Caltrans Division of Research, Innovation and System Information, DRISI. And I apologize because I mixed my eyes up the first time around. Um, no matter how often I do it, it still seems to be a challenge. Um, but um, I think it's important that everyone know, even if you're a, a, a Caltrans team member, that there are people focusing on statewide innovation uh, within, within the department. And so Pauline, can you tell us a little bit more about um, what you do uh, at Caltrans? Sure, thank you. Um, so again, my name is Pauline Valenzuela. I'm a senior transportation planner at Caltrans and my role is uh, the statewide innovation coordinator for Caltrans. And what I'm tasked with um, is building and fostering that innovative culture at Caltrans. Um, and Caltrans is, you know, 22,000 strong. So it's a, it's a big effort and a lot of change management. Um, but we are really trying to provide resources and tools um, so we can share, you know, capture, share, and um, implement innovations um, statewide, not just within a district or a or a division. Um, and so that's a lot of work. And we're a small team, but we really are making a difference. And so we had an external newsletter, an um, internal newsletter that we just went external with it because we want to start sharing what we're doing and um, getting our local agencies more involved. So I'm really excited that we're kicking off the Build a Better Mousetrap program because it does involve external transportation partners such as yourself, you know, as local agencies. And we really want to be able to showcase, you know, what everyone's working on and what everyone's doing. We're all being creative and coming up with these innovative solutions to real problems that we have. And so it's kind of um, a little bit of share the wealth, you know, if, if you're encountering this problem that maybe somewhere someone else is and we can improve our efficiencies and, you know, we're all together, we're working to improve and build a better, you know, transportation infrastructure. So we're excited for this for this opportunity to um, kick off this Build a Better Mousetrap campaign. Um, and we're, you know, part of the campaign is we're utilizing um, Caltrans' crowdsourcing program called Innovation Station um, to collect these innovative projects. And so I'll take a, a little bit later in this presentation, I'll go over a little bit of those steps to do that. But um, yeah, innovation is huge and, huge and that's how uh, we progress in this entire world. So I'm excited to be here and be part of this. Thanks, Pauline. And so, you know, what we've tried to do now up to this point is introduce you to who some of the players are um, in this um, and demonstrate the fact that innovation is important to what um, the LTAP program does. We now want to sort of get into some of the, the specifics of what Build a Better Mousetrap actually is, how it um, benefits local and, and, and tribal uh, agencies. Um, but as I mentioned, it's part of a broader national initiative. And so to start it off and maybe give a little bit of background, I'd like to ask Dan Hawk to come back on and talk a little bit about why Build a Better Mousetrap uh, exists. Um, and as this sort of slide indicates, um, why we want to celebrate local innovation. Absolutely. Thank you, Tom. So um, <clears throat> you know, when you're in school and, uh, and they tell you don't cheat and don't copy from the test the neighbor next to you, that's, that's for your own good. But, you know, once we get out, we start thinking like, hey, you know, if the neighboring state or the neighboring agency is doing something in a better way, 
it's actually good for us to copy them, right? We want to learn the best and the absolute um, optimal way to complete our jobs because that's our duty to the public as stewards of, um, of taxpayer money uh, to provide the, the most cost-effective and efficient way to do things. And so um, part of that um, is, is uh, a way to recognize that, right? And this Build a Better Mousetrap is program is is how Federal Highways recognizes that nationally and takes those things and spreads them out. So, um, you know, it's kind of, I guess, like a bold, innovative, smart, pioneering kind of uh, way of examining, you know, processes and, uh, you know, procedures and devices and solutions. So this is the way to recognize all of that, uh, those things that, that go above and beyond, um, you know, locally from, from really small innovations to very big innovations and anything in between. Um, and our, our process is uh, that we like um, to go to the states and say, hey, please solicit to your state and then put them together for a, um, a national recognition and, uh, um, and an attempt to uh, give them a good name for, what the, the, for the things that they've done. So I think, I think that's, that's about our kind of our, our, our overview of what the purpose of Build a Better Mousetrap is. And um, I think we're going to talk next a little bit about how the state uh, plans to implement that here. Yeah, that's that's right. Thank you, Dan. Um, you know, it's interesting for a, a, a state that is often known for um, innovation and for testing out what sometimes are viewed as crazy ideas, but then and outside of the box ideas, but then become become the standard. Um, we we almost have a blank slate with build a better mouse trap. I think there's an untapped um, reservoir of innovations at the local um, at the local level um, that haven't taken advantage of this program, and that's first and foremost what we want to do. Um, not only showcase the innovations, but showcase forums like Build a Better Mousetrap as a way to make sure that people know about the good work that is happening in California. So um, I wanted to go through sort of briefly what the statewide contest is going to look like and, and Pauline will sort of take us through some of the mechanics and how you interface with, um, with the innovations platform. Um, but um, as we said, this is a, a program that's open to California local and tribal governmental agencies. But for those of you within Caltrans, for example, um, you play a critical role in helping us get the word out and connecting us to your local partners, particularly if you're in a district office, um, so that we are aware of what's happening out there. Um, we've tried to, well, FHWA has, has tried to make it an easy lift and we've tried to, to make it an easy lift within California by making the process as simple as possible and our thanks to, to Pauline there. Um, we have an online application uh, through the platform. Um, and it, it's helpful to the extent that um, you're also able to get access to examples of, of um, Build a Better Mousetrap applications um, from outside of California as well. So if you can get a sense of what might constitute a good application. Um, there is no application limit, but we do want, um, the, we can have duplication uh, and we want new and original projects only, okay? Um, there are four principal categories and we, where we hope that we get a great number of applications and that we will be selecting uh, winners in each of those categories, um, in addition to runners up. Um, the winners we, we wanna forward and pass along to uh, for the national competition, but at the same time, we really want to be gathering data on lots of programs that we can highlight in our newsletters, um, in our various other communications channels, right? So by gathering information for the Build a Better Mousetrack program in particular, we hope to be um, revealing a, a whole host of programs, uh, projects, um, that are, that are um, uh, taking, taking place throughout the state. Um, 
The four principal categories are on the, the right-hand side. There's, there's an award for innovative project, um, which are solutions that address any and all phases of a project life cycle. So this could be planning and design, it could be engineering, it could be construction, operations, and, and management. Um, the focus here is on projects that introduce new ideas, new concepts, um, ones that are locally relevant, um, that are original, demonstrate uh, creativity, um, but also that um, have potential transferability um, in, in other places. Um, there, are, there are projects that, uh, that might be equipment based. Um, there's, a, there's an example that you can find uh, on the website that looks at um, uh, the hopper from Jones County, Iowa, which is a, a solution that um, eliminated hassles and inefficiencies in the design of, of dump trucks, right? That, so very, very specific, um, specific, but res responded to a localized need uh, that has application beyond, beyond the state. The bold steps category focuses on locally relevant high risk projects or processes that present a breakthrough solution and demonstrate um, high reward. Okay. Um, the smart transformation project looks again locally relevant significant changes in any transportation activity or process that is smart right so if you engaged in strategic visioning or developing of mission statements you know that smart means uh, specific measurable achievable realistic and time bound uh, solutions and there's um, we've got an access to information on a, a smart transformation uh, involving uh, applications of ArcGIS uh, mapping software um, as applied to ADA uh, inspection, right? Uh, the last category is the Pioneer uh, category, which focuses on, again, locally relevant products or tools that are among the first to solve a maintenance problem uh, with a homegrown solution. So this is, um, th there's, the definitions are broad enough that I think there's room for applications from a wide variety of things from, pro again, from processes to, to engineering uh, and beyond. Um, the submission deadline is uh, May 25th and winners are going to be announced by uh, June 3rd. Um, the winning applications are gonna be based on FHWA's judging criteria, which look at sort of a number of different factors, including the overall impact uh, and effectiveness of the innovation and effectiveness, uh, including efficiency, um, fiscal impact, monetary savings, uh, benefit of the innovation um, where it has been implemented. Um, one of the other review criteria is community and agency benefits, right? The extent and scope to which um, the impact uh, is felt more broadly by um, uh, the transportation agency, as well as the community, right? Um, and innovations that have potential for broad national impact beyond the, the, the local agency obviously will stand out more and, and um, I think get, uh, get, get a higher score in the process. Um, another review category is originality, right? What's the, the, what's the creative nature of the innovation, um, particularly for the transportation industry sector? Um, applicability, transferability is another review cr uh, criteria. That's the extent to which the innovation can be uh, easily adopted and implemented by peer local agencies and, and tribal communities. Um, this is about dissemination and tech transfer. Uh, cost effectiveness is a review criteria, um, both in, in, in terms of an immediate impact, you know, could be what, is it, what did it do for this year's budget, um, but also life cycle costs, right? Both of those are important considerations. Um, another review criteria, time savings. Is time, is time savings a, um, a factor? Uh, does it improve? Um, scheduling, um, uh, efficiency, uh, where's the, where's the impact from a, from a time perspective? 
And then also, we're also we also want to take a look at the quality of the application itself. Um, are you able to very succinctly uh, demonstrate the impact of your innovation? Uh, does it answer the key questions, the who, what, why, where, when, and how? And I think the application leads you in that direction. But obviously, um, it's best not to assume um, uh, too much knowledge um, for the reviewers, because we're all going to be coming at it from different perspectives. Um, there are opportunities to include uh, spotlight videos as well. Uh, we welcome those, um, and that will help your, your review as uh, well. Um, the, the recipients within California, the, the winners of each of those four categories will benefit um, by um, getting some free LTAP training uh, during the, the coming fiscal year. Uh, that is not insignificant. Um, and these are, um, and Daniel can correct me, um, uh, Daniel Burke, if I'm, if I'm not correct, but these are, this is training at an agency uh, wide level, so throughout your your local or tribal agency, um, so that's that's an extremely valuable benefit of being part of the program. Um, showcased in 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 uh, the, the California Innovation Expo and Exchange, and then of course the uh, being advanced to the Build a Better Mousetrap National Competition and National Exposure, and then as I said, in addition, also having an opportunity to be part of of communication pieces that showcase, in, showcase innovation um, across the state of California, reaching your peers. Um, it's always good to be able to show off a little bit. Um, and then I, um, I think if we go to the next slide, we'll actually talk a little bit about how you take your good ideas and go through the application process. So Pauline, if I could ask you to talk a little bit about the mechanics of of how you make sure you get your innovation in front of the reviewers. Sure. Um, so there's a little bit on the screen of what we are asking um, is to describe the challenge. Or, okay, I, th I thought this is the right page. Um, so um, I'll go through the steps a little bit more um, as we, um, I'll, in a second, but first, uh, these are these are the questions that we'll be asking in the intake form, just so we can gather the proper information to really review the submissions, vet them, um, and select you know so the, the top the the top innovations. So you'll have to register to log in. I'll talk about that in a second, and then you know we'll need your title, agency name, contact information. Um, everything on the left hand side right there, but let me go ahead and um, share my screen and kind of um, walk you through it live a little bit just so you can get an idea um, of how it works. Let me share my screen. Hold on a second. Okay. All right, so you're gonna start off at, um, and um, Scott or Tom, if you can speak up, um, if you're not seeing it, but I think you're seeing my screen right now. Um, but uh, so you're gonna start off at either through the local assistance blog or through an, an email invite that you've received. And once you're there, um, there'll be a link for you to click on. So let's say you're, I'm gonna start off at the blog. Um, so right now at the top, the top article is the Build a Better Mousetrap. So we'll click on that and it'll take you to the actual article. And if you scroll down to the application process, then um, you see here that it's going to take you to the campaign page for Build a Better Mousetrap. And this is what it looks like. And so once you read over the information on it, um, it'll explain to you a little bit more about um, why we're doing it and everything that Tom just went over basically, including the four cat um, application categories, which you'll have to designate when you um, submit your innovations. So please take a moment uh, when, you, when you go to this page to, take, to read over everything um, as you prepare for um, submitting an innovation. First, let me go through browse submitted innovations. 
um, so you can get an idea of what that looks like. So once you've entered or when you just, or if you just wanna see the examples that we have in there now or anyone else's innovation, you're gonna just simply click browse submitted innovations. And right now we have two samples in here. Um, we ask that you input a thumbnail. There'll be a question on the intake form so you can have um, your picture or something right here on top that makes it a little bit more exciting. Um, otherwise it'll just be um, some small, you know, just basic graphic. And then this is what it'll look like when you um, submit it. Um, it'll have, this one has just minimal information, but um, it, it gives you the, the idea of the questions that you'll have to answer. So it's not too lengthy, but, to, but does give us some good information. And we, there'll be an attachment uh, section. So if you have any pictures or a white paper or a presentation or anything that you want to, to attach, um, we'd love to, um, for you to attach that as well. So we can do a, um, a great job on uh, looking over and um, measuring your innovation. So one important thing, um, well, you know what, and let me just go back here. So once you wanna go back to the list, there's this back button that takes you to the list. But if you wanna go back to the home page, then you come up here and click home. It's all very, um, uh, you know, easy to, to understand and, and navigate yourself. But one thing that we did want to point out that's important um, is you can go ahead, you can review this campaign page and you can also browse innovations without registering or logging in. However, if you decide that you do want to submit an intake, we do have to, we are asking you to log in. It's just part of our crowdsourcing tool um, for external campaigns that if you want to actually input um, then you'll have to, um, to log in and register. So I'm gonna quickly go over that with you. So from this page, you will um, hit submit an innovation and then it'll walk you through the registration process if it's your first time logging in. And I'm gonna share quickly my screen to kind of just go over uh, what you do. So from the top of that page that I just showed you, you're gonna hit submit an innovation. And when you do, it's gonna take you to this um, little icon that will pop up on the, the page that will have login and register. On your first time entering, then you'll go ahead and register. And the process simply, and you click that tab and it's just gonna ask you for an email address. And you put the email address in, and then within a few seconds, you will get an email or, I guess within a few, you know, I'd say a half hour, but it's usually pretty quick. You'll get an email um, in your inbox uh, with the email that you registered on. So, um, and once you get that, it's gonna send you the steps to, uh, to register. Um, there is, the, it's a few steps and a kind of a little bit back and forth, but it's fairly simple. You just go in, you click on the link and it's gonna take you back to the campaign, <clears throat> campaign page. Um, actually, it's gonna take you to the Browse Innovations page. And then you're going to, um, under the login tab that pops up, you're going to make, you're gonna select, um, forgot your password. So even though you haven't put in a password yet, this is just their process. You say, forgot your password. It's gonna send you an email with the link to update your password. And then you follow that link. Um, and then um, link to choose and enter. And you're gonna enter your new password and then you're gonna say re reset password. And then once you do that, you'll go back to the login page and um, you'll go back go back to the campaign page. And this time when you do browse, uh, I mean, submit an innovation, it's gonna ask you for your email and password. And you simply enter your, the email um, that you used and the password that you just established. And then that's gonna take you to the, um, to the intake form. Um, and so now you'll get, you won't get the registration link. It'll just go straight to the, um, intake form, which let me show you that now. So once you've registered, um, then you registered and logged in, you'll submit an innovation here. And it's very um, easy, you know, and easy to understand and figure out on your own. So then you go through just like if this were a survey monkey or some other type of survey, and you just enter the submission name, agency name, phone number, email address, um, we'd love uh, an image and that will update this section here um, and your thumbnail for this innovation. And then here's where you choose a category. So those are four steps. You'll go in and you choose which category that it is or that you, you 
uh, fill that your submissions should fall into. Here is, we've added a, um, another, some descriptions here, so you can, um, don't have to back, go back to the last page to figure out which one you want to step in. So there's the categories. Um, and then when was it implemented? Describe your challenge, describe how you developed it, the positive impact. And then this is the bottom here for attachments, um, any attachments or anything that you want to add to it, um, including, like I said, white papers or presentations or anything else or images. Um, please add them there. And all of this really is to help us make a decision. Um, you know, since we're, we're, you know, this is a competition, we want, we need as much information as we can um, to help support your innovation. And, and uh, so, yeah, so um, that's pretty simple and it's self-explanatory, I think, as you go through. And then once you're done, you just come to this button here um, on the right-hand side that says submit improvement, and then it will be submitted. And at that point, um, the, at that point, uh, it, it may take a little bit, it goes through a process to where we have to look at it and make sure that it's appropriate and that there's not, um, you know, anyone who's registered that should not be, you know, should, should not be on here. So um, we'll go through a little content screening and once uh, we, once it's submitted and approved, then it'll, you'll be able to click on this link and browse innovations and it'll have a, um, your innovation will, sh will show there. So, um, and other people will be able to see your innovations uh, or your uh, submission. And then um, once submitted, then Scott and Tom um, will go through a vetting process. And, and I think they'll probably talk about that. So um, that's it. I think we're back to you guys now. Sorry, I was, uh, I muted myself. Um, thanks, Pauline. And I was gonna say that one of the, the real benefits, I think of the process that, that uh, Pauline and, and Scott on our end um, have established is an ability to sort of look at what else is being submitted. Cause this really, while we do wanna award um, innovations, we also wanna make sure that, they, that people are sharing them uh, as best practices and this process allows you to um, to do that. So I, I think now I mean, we've shared a lot of information with you. We want to make sure we have ample time for Q and A. Um, uh, application support, as you can see here, uh, Scott um, on, on the Cal State Long Beach and LTAP team um, is our point person. And then uh, Pauline uh, at DrySI is, um, is the point person for the online portal support. Um, we hope that it uh, that the, the the process goes smoothly, but we want to be prepared to be able to um, to make sure that we can get you through it, um, so that we can get your innovation logged. Um, are there are there questions from any of our of our participants? Here on the webinar. You know, Tom, while those thoughts come together, I just want to reinforce that, it, it, and I appreciate uh, that what you and Pauline have shared, um, our goal is not to make this a administrative nightmare. And, you know, Pauline and I worked on this to try and make the application process as simple as possible. Watching it unfold looks a little bit complicated. Know that you can contact me in order to help you in any way get your innovation posted, noticed, recognized. Our goal is to make sure that we we capture those innovations across California, uh, and that's the primary goal. So if you need help, please contact me, and I can assist you. And you know, Pauline's here in case we have any trouble with the online portal. Uh, she's also a backup uh, support for that. So contact us. I'm going to follow up with an email to everybody who's attending today with this card so that you've got a link to the Bright Ideas um, Innovation Station uh, uh, direct connection. So you can jump right to there and also our contact information should you run into any trouble. Yeah, thank you for that, Scott. It's a, it's a good point. We wanna make sure that the process isn't, isn't an impediment. And I think you and Pauline have done a, a great job in, 
in making sure that it's not. But um, in case there are any challenges, we've got people here to answer your questions. So. Yes, please, please don't be shy to ask questions. Our success of this program depends on you. So if you have a good question, please ask. You know, we'll be happy to answer it. We want to make this process as, as Tom and as Scott has mentioned, and as Pauline has assisted, as simple as possible. In fact, you know, while we're waiting for some questions to keep, Scott, can you go back a few slides and just talk a little bit more about the the entry? Yeah, right there. Perfect. I have a story to share here. I have a brother in law who's very into hunting. <clears throat> and so one day he goes out hunting, he grabs his gear, goes out to the lodge. And he asks the innkeeper, says, Hey, have you seen any tracks out here? And the innkeeper says, Yeah, the, somebody saw some tracks about 100 yards from here. So he thinks the innkeeper goes to sleep puts on his gear in the morning, goes out. He sees the tracks, follows them. He, he's gone for a few hours. He comes back to the inn a couple hours later. He's all bruised up. Looks like he, he hurt his leg pretty bad. The innkeeper's surprised. He says, Sh should I call an air ambulance for you? What, what happened? What happened? And Brother Law says, well, you were right. 100 yards out, I found the tracks, followed them. That's when I got hit by the train. So it's important that we understand the details that will help us apply for this process. Obviously, there was not enough clarification given when my brother-in-law asked about the tracks. He should have said, you know, did you see deer or animal tracks? What we really want to do and how the this innovative project award here that's up on the right of our screen here for James County is they really did a good job of describing the challenge and problem. and What, what was really an issue for your agency? And then describe how you developed built, and what was the solution and how did you implement it? And what were the positive impacts results, you know, and how can that be applied to other agencies and other communities across California? That's what we'd really love to hear and share and get excited about, about your entry. As well, a photo here, you know, really helps the entry. And, you know, if you have time or if you have a brief video available, you know, please consider uploading it. And together, <clears throat> Cal State University of Long Beach, ourselves. We're going to help uh, review the applications and select some winners. Well, I had Scott. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, thanks. Yeah, I, Daniel, I was just going to add that, you know, if, when you're thinking about um, as you consider what, what's a best practice for you, what types of information are most important? Right, you know, how much did it cost? How long did it take? Um, who else had to be involved? Those are the type of things that you want to make sure are in your in your application, right? And Dan Hawk, I was going to ask you. You know, you've sort of been you've seen a lot more of these preps than any of us. Do you have any hints about what makes for a a strong application? Yeah, it's, um, I think the strongest applications are those that save the most money, ones that um, can be used over a long period of time, you know, not just one off kind of things. Yeah, that's a good point as well. Well, and to Daniel's point, you know, where we want to start is just by capturing your innovation. If, um, if once we we take a look at your application and it looks like we could use some more information or it looks like it could benefit from a little video or, or maybe a, a photograph, we will reach out to you and assist in, in fleshing things out, right? Let's, we wanna make sure that you're, you feel empowered to take the first step by sharing. Sharing, share what you've done. The, the hopper here is, is a simple example of a workaround that Jones County came up with to make a uh, pavement uh, graveling uh, a simpler process. There's, there's another, there's a road electric training system from Illinois where they came up with the idea of getting technicians out of the tollway while they were training on electrical systems for the, the tollway, um, the, the tollway system, which is also high voltage. 
<laughs> These are just simple innovations that no one would even think about potentially sharing, but they've got the potential to reach across states with some great ideas. If you've got, if you've done something like this in the past, if you've got an innovation that you you've um, you figured out, you've put into 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 the process, it, it's saving you time, money, um, making the process more effective. We're here to help you showcase that. So just let us know. And again, contact me if you need some help in fleshing that out or writing it up. We're here to help you with that. The other thing I would add is that um, if you have not yet documented um, an innovation and this process helps you do that, um, I imagine it, it would be valued within your agency because you'll have you'll have information that you can use for for sharing information about the project in other in other channels into other audiences within your local community. So it's good to be documenting these these uh, innovations regardless. Yeah, and maybe one final ask, Tom. I know we're, we're chewing up all the time, but I think you touched on this earlier. For our, our DOT friends that are on, on this webinar, you know, our ask to you would be to reach out to any of the locals that you work with that you may have an idea that this could be a good program for them to um, share, to recognize, to acknowledge some of the work that they've done. You know, please reach out, reach out to me if you need some information to send to them connect us, anything that uh, would help spread this word across California would be appreciated. Thanks, Scott. Yeah, it's a good reminder. And if you have any other recommendations about um, contacts or communication channels you'd like us to use in, in getting the word out, um, please feel free to shoot an email to Scott at that email address or place it in the chat now because uh, we'll we'll capture that as well. Yeah, there we go. If um, if I could ask if you could just uh, indicate in some way either raising hands or putting in chat, are there innovations out there that you have in mind that you would like to, that you're gonna consider submitting? Uh, there's a question from Sherry. How can folks sign up to receive LTAP or CITT? email notifications, right? Um, so uh, I would, and Caltrans uh, dry SI uh, notifications. Um, Scott, do you wanna talk about how best, how we should be best receiving those requests? Yeah, and I think the easiest thing, because I, I hate links on webinars, right? Nobody, nobody talks links. So what I'm gonna do is make sure that all this information is packaged up into an email that I'm gonna, I'll send out uh, blind CC to each of our attendees today. Okay, great. And then uh, Pauline, the question for you as well, what about dry SI notifications? Yeah, I think when Scott sends that email out, I'll send him a link on how to, um, how to register um, for our uh, external innovation list as well. So it'll be on that same email. Thank you. Okay, any, any other questions or comments? I'd still love to, I'd still love to get some indication that we're gonna get some applications from this from this group.
All right. Well, if if there are no other questions, um, I'm and I'll I'll check uh, once again with my partners and Dan, Daniel, Dan, Scott, Pauline. Anything else that you wanted to say before we close? Well, I'm really grateful for you guys putting this on today. Thank you very much. Thank you, and thanks for for FHWA's leadership and for making this an um, available to to local agencies. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, with that, I think we can we can adjourn. Look for an email from Scott, um, as we talked about, and then uh, we'll we'll get the the information for LTAP and and Dry SI as as well. Thanks, Tom. And submit your applications by May twenty fifth. Thank you, Scott and Tom. Thanks, everybody.